start. Okay, so uh, obviously in today's lesson, we'll be looking at physical sciences. So hopefully, if we can be quick enough, we can manage to go through both of those questions. And again, I know there are three types. So uh, those are just two types where we'll be looking at um, uh, different types of forces. But before we even start with those question papers, I just want us uh, to firstly remember the type of forces that we have. Let's just name them in terms of a, a number one. Say number one, um, remember, we've got forces in physical science. This is just a revision, uh, uh, LB. Uh, LB, are you still there? All right, can you please repeat that What? So I was saying, this is just a quick revision before we start solving uh, those problems. Yeah, okay, noted. Yeah, so just make sure that in case if uh, you want to ask me something, then you can just you can just uh, unmute, pose a question, then I'll, I'll just quickly stop from what I'm doing. And again, in case if the network is bad, just let me know, because I'm trying to uh, do something of which, let's discuss this towards the end of our lesson. Just make sure that uh, we discuss, discuss, let's say, option number B. So just make sure it'll be that towards the end of the lesson we, we just discussed. Maybe I'll remember exactly what I wanted us to do. So um, in physical sciences, obviously we've got forces. So we've got different types of forces. Let's firstly talk about the first type of a force. Remember, the moment we talk about a force, then we talk about something which has got a unit of Newton. So let's see. The first type we can talk about gravitational force. So uh, if you like LB, if you are tired of uh, pronouncing that very long word, you can just say weight. Uh, let's see. You can just say weight. So it doesn't matter whether you say gravitational uh, force or you can say weight. The symbol for gravitational force is that one of Fg indicating that uh, this is force as a result of gravity. Then for weight is just W. So that means the force uh, which is as a result of gravity, the formula is equals to M G. But because we say it, gravitational force and weight is the same thing, it means also weight is equals to mg. Most importantly, the main influence is that gravity um, over there. So both of these it actually is the same thing. So force of gravity and weight is the same thing, which is as a result of the mass of an object and um gravitational acceleration so number two uh, let's see we've got what we call a normal force a uh, we can just say we've got what we call a normal force and again normal force is represented by um let me just write there if you like you can say fn it means normal force otherwise you can just say a n capital letter n most importantly both of these they are measured in newtons why because this is a type of a force called a um, normal force the third one let's talk about frictional force so we also have frictional force. So frictional force, normally you can just keep, say capital letter F and small letter F over there. Or otherwise, if you like, you can just make that type of F, which indicates this is 
a frictional force. Uh, number four, let's talk about um, applied force. So for now, LB, you just need to be aware that we've got different types of forces. And here, I'm giving you a list of different types of forces. When we deal with those exam type of questions, that's when you will understand better in terms of which type of a force act in which a uh, direction and how does it influence the motion of an object. Force number four, uh, let's talk about applied force. Uh, applied force, you can just write capital letter F, then A over there. A to indicate this is applied force. Forward slash, if you like, you can just say F. It indicates that there we are talking about applied force. Number five, the other type of a force, it's tension. Uh, let's see, tension. So with regards to tension, you can just indicate it by capital letter T, or otherwise, if you like, you can say force of tension. Very, very much important um, LB. So let's check something very, very interesting over there. Remember, we've got these two types of formulas which says force, it's actually equals to mass times G. Or this formula can be written as force is equals to mass times acceleration. LB, unmute your mic. I want us to now have a quick chat with regards to those two formulas. Yeah, my, my mic is unmuted. Okay, so uh, do you have an idea of why would we have a force being equals to mg and again still have force equals to ma are you able to notice the difference between those two uh, no okay so remember um this one is only for vertical movement i'm sure you now have an idea ne? Ver uh, yeah vertical, uh, let's say movement do you just want to guess or just make a comment in terms of what uh, you understand with regards to that vertical movement uh does it have to do with the um, like the vertical component so in in short let me just quickly get another board to explain this so in short lb a uh, if we have F is equals to MG. <clears throat> so it's it's actually, when we say vertical movement, it's because of that gravity. We know that always that gravity is, I mean, the gravity is always downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So uh, again, if you have an object moving sideways, can you see that? In this case, that has got no impact on the sideway movement. So that is why, in this case, we would say M multiplied by A being acceleration. I'm not sure if it now makes sense. Wait, you're saying that we're using acceleration because uh, gravity doesn't apply there? In, in case if, uh, let's say this is the flow... Uh, and then let's say we've got a car there. Can you see? This car is actually moving either to the left or to the right, isn't it? Yes. So in this case, uh, uh, this is you in your car, LB. You are driving in that direction and you step on accelerator. And then uh, you start an acceleration or you start to accelerate. So that acceleration is this one for A. Because the one for G is actually for if an object is falling. That makes sense. So, yeah, so that means uh, 
always when you see this formula, it means you must be dealing with objects moving up and down, and that G is constant at 9.8 meters per second. But for objects moving left and right, uh, we no longer concentrate on G because uh, the force as a result of gravity, which is that downwards, is being balanced by the normal force. So they cancel each other out. We no longer talk about those, but we focus on the sideway uh, movement. And on the sideway movement, that's when we have the forces being equals to MA. Uh, I hope that one, it makes sense. I'll be in it. <clears throat> yes. So, uh, quickly, 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 let me also explain something over there to say a uh, we have an object on a horizontal slope. Let's say is that car again. I just want you to be aware in terms of how these forces uh, balance with each with each other. So remember, force number one we talked about gravitational force. So gravitational force is that one of the downwards force. Let's say force of gravity. Then this is m g. Then uh, this force is being balanced by the normal force and normal force we say it is also equals to mg so whatever the mass of the object with its g if we find maybe the force of gravity let's say being 20 newton because this object is actually on that surface and it's not continuing to move downwards so that means for it to actually remain in that position on that surface is because it is balanced by that normal force let's say this is an object which is not moving but it is just standing there so because it is standing there it's not moving one thing for sure we know for it to stand on the surface is because of force of gravity and for it not to continue a a falling or maybe a sagging this surface is because this surface is actually balancing uh, that object to remain in its position. So it's because of the force normal. So that means the moment we talk about force of gravity, at the same time, you should think about a uh, normal force. Ne? Yes, sir. Now let's talk about force applied. Let's talk about force applied so in that case lb does it now make sense in terms of the formula being m a a s a not s g so that means g and that one it's actually both of these are acceleration but this is acceleration due to gravity which is constant and this one it depends by how much of speed uh, you are driving at or by how much of speed you increase uh, do you have light now uh, lb with those two Yes, sir. Okay, so now we also have this force applied. Uh, uh, it, it can be cancelled by what we call a force of friction. So force of friction, LB, um, is the force that is always opposing the movement of the object. I'm not sure, LB, if that part make sense but it has to make sense before i i continue with my explanation just make sure that that part that i've just explained will be a uh, it makes sense if it doesn't i'll need to explain it because this is one of the most important forces that you need to fully understand does it make sense i'll be with me saying a uh, frictional force is the force always in the opposite direction of the movement of the object yeah i understand that part but why do we say that it's um opposes the movement of an object it's because of the surface is not flat or what so that means let's say a uh, if the surface is it's it's smooth let's say we have a smooth surface no no let me start with this one, LB, just so that you've got an idea. Now. Let's say we have a ice surface. Ice surface. 
and then let's say a a what type of a surface let me just say rough or a bit yeah let me just say rough and do that and maybe let me say a gravel gravel and do that and do that so obviously it'll be if maybe there's a car an object a uh, traveling or driving on an ice surface which is a um, frictionless frictionless so it simply means this object can move in that direction without a uh, stopping let's say you just push it in the lb because the surface is frictionless this thing it can pass provinces countries um what is it continents and around the world why because there's no frictional force it's more like there's no a uh, any force opposing that um object i'm not sure it'll be if you understand that i'm just trying to explain in terms of these three types of surfaces meaning that one there's no friction which means this object it will forever move in that direction if it is if it is pushed in that let's say we you push it and then it moves at 30 meters per second so that means for every um a second it travels 30 meters and it will be at that speed forever it will never stop it will never increase its velocity it will just travel at 30 meters per second why because a uh, what is it there is no frictional force a uh, i'm not sure if that part makes sense <clears throat> yeah it makes sense so let's now have a look at a rough surface you push it again at a speed of 30 meters per second but because the surface is rough that means there's definitely going to be a force of friction. Why arrow in that direction is because the movement of the object is in that direction. So that means an object has to first move. Then after a movement has been started, it means that's when there's going to be a frictional force. And frictional force for it to be there, it depends on the surface being a rough or frictionless. It makes sense now, LB. Yes, sir. So let's get to uh, the gravel. So obviously, this one being rough, let's consider that to be tar road. You know tar road, Nes? Um, yes. So also, this one traveling in that direction at 30 meters per second. So can you see, LB, that between these two surfaces, obviously, this is too rough than that one and this is too rough than that one because this one is almost or completely frictionless this one is tarot it's a bit a uh, rough but not that much but when it comes to, to gravel it's way a uh, too rough meaning for example this one it will just travel in that direction forever let me do that forever but this one because there is a a rough surface there as a result of frictional force this object can possibly maybe uh, travel 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 and maybe stop somewhere there if it doesn't continue to accelerate and and, and it decelerates then for this one uh, because it's uh, so travel, you're cutting here is it still it's it's cutting Uh, let me do this cutting network uh, sickness uh, timeless and whatever okay so uh, is it better now or is it still cutting yeah it's better now okay hundred percent so let's see so I was saying in this case there's obviously going to be frictional um force also there there is frictional force so there frictional force is actually equals to zero so lb here comes a question what 
uh, determines the amount of frictional force? It's obviously because of the surface. You remember we said if the formula for frictional force is actually a, a what is it, mg. Do you still remember this part? Yes, sir, sir. So, a, because we said the frictional force is actually equals to a, a, what is it, mg. Let me quickly check something here a, a, on my notes. I just want to make sure that I get that word correct. A, I'm not sure, LB, if you remember this thing that they call mu. I'm not sure if they do this thing in last uh, mu LB. Yeah, the coefficient. Yes, the 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 the, the, ki the kinetic coefficient. So this is what we call um the kinetic coefficient. So we consider this object which is moving but on that rough surface. So they will most probably give you the coefficient of that surface and then you know the mass of the object then you know g so this formula it helps you to determine the force of um what is it force of friction but if it's just f being equals to mg then this is force as a result of gravity at the moment you put in this one then it means a uh, you are now converting it from normal force or force of gravity to knowing the frictional um, force over there. So are you now having an idea Aldo, of uh, how to interpret those different types of forces? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, so quickly, 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 let me do this. Uh, let me say the moment we start having two objects being connected, by some, which could be a rope of negligible mass, then that's when we talk about tension over there. So let's say we've got cut A and we also have cut B. So the movement of this is in that direction, LB. Let's try to draw force diagram separating a, or force diagram for each of these cut. Um, it seems, LB, it seems like because everything is moving in that direction, if you draw cut A over there, it seems like as a result of tension, this cut A is actually being pulled. Um, what is it? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let me quickly get something there. So this is the tricky part with regards to tension. Uh, firstly, in order to know the arrows, firstly draw both of them separately, have this one and also a draw that over there. So let's see LB, in terms of this force is acting, a, I mean that tension, can you see it's more like this cut B because the system is moving in that direction. It's more like this cut B is the one which is actually pulling that one in that direction. At the same time, a, this one is actually pulling towards itself. So it's more like when we talk about tension, we talk about force pulling towards a, an object. So for example, it means there you've got that force in that direction, that force in that direction. So that means here we actually have negative tension and then here we have positive um, tension. Why positive? Because maybe that's if we assume the right direction to be positive. So that means anything in the opposite is negative. Let's maybe have a look at an helicopter there uh, with uh, that over there. So let's see, this is that cable of negligible mass we've got a container there. Then it seems like a, there obviously we've got a tension. So when we talk about tension, it's more like we have arrows towards each object. 
it's more like we have errors towards each each object. I think I'm getting the best explanation uh, of what attention actually means. I'm not sure, LB, if it makes sense in terms of when you talk about the tension, uh, we talk about two objects being connected by something, and within that string, we have this force towards that, and again, we have that uh, in that direction. I'll also double check if this is a conclusive statement, but for now, let's just see if we have two objects like that. In terms of tension, this one is pulling towards itself, and this also is also pulling towards itself. Can we just conclude on that for now, LB? Yes, sir. Okay, hundred percent. So now let's quickly try uh, to solve those problems. I'm not going to erase this. So what I'm going to try to do, LB, I want to try and bring this question paper. Uh, I'm just praying that you'll be able to see this one. Mm, let me quickly do this. I'm just not sure if you'll be able to see because I haven't done this before. <clears throat> just to avoid you having to try and go back and check in. Are you able to see there, LB? Is it clear? Or maybe if it's small, let me do this and then enlarge that part there. LB, can you see there? Is it clear? Yes, sir, I'm able to see. Is it 100%? Yes, sir. Okay, nice. So what I'm going to be doing there uh, is to quickly read through that question. So normally, LB, with this type of lessons, um, we normally do this type of a problem so that um, a you can also look for similar types of problems. And the other thing will be never, ever, ever solve a question paper where you don't have a memo. Name. Um, just just uh, try to avoid that. It could be textbook. It, it could be a, quest, a past question paper. Uh, for as long as it doesn't have a memo, it's going to make you to keep on wondering if whatever that you did was correct. And again, you will always be con convinced that whatever that you did is correct um, because you haven't got any confidence and you can just only rely on the information that you have. So always, even myself, when I do this type of question papers, I do prepare for our lesson. I try to redo it and then I check the memo. If I've, I've got it correctly, then I'm going to be able to provide the best lesson to make you understand. So I'm less confident if I have to explain something that I haven't done. And again, um, having to explain something that you, you are not sure of. You can even feel that there's no confidence. So uh, the lesson won't be enjoyable. So Every time, it'll be just make sure that whatever that you do, you've got a memo so that you can always refer and check where you went wrong, how it's being done correctly. So even myself at this stage, um, uh, I still get some questions wrong. It's not like all the questions I'm getting them correct, but I just make sure that for those that I do in the lesson, uh, I practice before. Uh, that, do, do you understand what I'm trying to say there, LB? Yes, sir. Okay, so quickly, let's see. Question number four, start a question on a new page. Always, LB, make sure to start each question on a new page. So two blocks of mass 8kg and 4kg respectively are joined with an inelastic string of negligible mass. The string runs over a frictionless pulley the 8 kg block is on a horizontal surface while the 4 kg block is on an inclined surface or plane of a um, 40 degree angle with the horizontal. Uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction um, for both blocks is 0 0.2. The 4 kg block accelerates down the slope. 
Okay, let me just quickly try to redraw um, that diagram over there. So we've got something similar to that, and it forms an angle of 40 degrees there. Uh, then we have a pulley there, then we have that, then we have that bigger one being 8 kg, and then we have this one being 4 kg. That's one is a smaller than one there. So <clears throat> um, they said the kinetic friction for both. So you can just say mu k for this one is 0, 0,2 and also mu k for this one is 0, 0,2. So in your head, LB, you notice that that surface is actually the same throughout, isn't it? So if it was different values there, it could mean there maybe it's tar road and there that portion of that section is, is gravel. That that could be the reason why you, you possibly have different a uh, mu there and there or a kinetic friction. Does do you have an idea there, LB? Does it make sense there? Wait, can you explain again? So that means um let me firstly think about something quickly. Okay, let's say we've got a mountain there. Um, let me get another marker. Let's say we've got a mountain, LB. We've got a mountain, and then there's that other side of the mountain, and this other side. So, <clears throat> let's say a, it's only a tar road at the top of a mountain. It's a tar road there. But down the mountain at that slope, it's not a, a tar road, but they just left it to be gravel because it's on a slope. Now, a, you are driving a car there. You are driving a car there, and then this car is pulling, is being, is being pulled by another car. So let's say there's another car. So can you see? Because this one is there, between there is actually, what is it? Tar road. And then this one, that section is traveling on, let's say, a gravel there. So obviously, the coefficient of friction there, maybe it could be 0, 0,2. It doesn't matter what, whatever that it is. But there, it could be 0, 0,3. Why are these coefficients different, LB? Because of the surface, it's not the same. Hundred percent. So my question there was, a, uh, what can you say about these two values being the same, the coefficient of friction? Does it mean that it has the say, same surface? So we can just assume that uh, the surface is the same. No. Yes, sir. Okay, hundred percent. So, um, let's see. <clears throat> let's try to check what the first question. So, the first question we can just keep it most because that one it doesn't it doesn't change, isn't it? Yes. I'm not sure. Are you able to see that question? Yeah, I think you turn seven off machine or it. See, so we can just uh, skip that one. Let's 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 go to four point two, which says draw a labeled free body diagram of all the forces acting on the 4 kg block you remember lb that we've got two things now a what we have we have a a labeled free body diagram and we also have a labeled force diagram do you remember lb yes sir a, so in this case you notice that what they actually want us to calculate is a is a free body diagram name <clears throat> and remember free body diagram for a the 4 kg so the 4 kg is that one on an incline so remember you first make a dot why a dot because it's a a free body diagram so what are we having there lb uh, what type of forces are we having there? Let's check. 
did they ever talk about applied force in that statement? No. No, 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 no. I, I don't remember. So that means number four is out. Uh, we know this one is always there, isn't it? Yes, sir. And then obviously because this one is there, we know this one is there, uh, it, it has to be there. Normal force is always there, especially if there's a surface. So if there's a surface involved, LB, if there's a surface involved, then normal force is there. But if an object is hanging, for example, a, a, an helicopter, which is a, trying to pull a load towards itself, can you see this This object is actually hanging? It's not, it's not on a surface. Do you agree? <clears throat> yeah, so it means that there's no normal force. There's no there's no normal force for that reason. But because here we're dealing with an object on a surface, then normal force is there. So you can see these forces are actually in order, LB. That one is always there. This one, it depends if an object is on air or otherwise air on the surface. So frictional force also, it depends on um, the given statement, whether they say this coefficient of friction or maybe they say the surface is rough for that reason we know frictional forces to be there lb in this case you say it there's no applied force then we can just scratch it out so do we possibly have a tension or did this did they say there is tension uh i don't remember but then since it's um hanging it means that there is tension so let's say because uh, it's connected. Let's say because it's connected. Ne? Yes, sir. Because obviously in terms of hanging, that's when we talk about an object which is in the air. So can you see that one is connected? Ne? Yes, sir. Yes, so uh, that means how many forces do we actually have? It seems like we've got four forces, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, so obviously we know weight is always in that direction so you can just start with weight and then um normal force is always perpendicular to the surface because you've noticed that every time when you talk about normal force we talk about the surface so it's always perpendicular to the surface. so can you see that surface it's at an angle that is why the normal force is going to be in that direction very very much important there lb now can you see we obviously have that one of tension in that direction. Wait, so sir. Just write it. Mm -hmm. Wait, how do we like um, estimate the direction of the normal force? Like where to put it? <clears throat> so let's say we've got an object on that slope. Um, this is that. So always when you do the direction for the normal force it's always perpendicular to the surface can you see there's the surface it has to form a 90 degree angle there so that is why we see it's in that direction for this slope so if it's on a horizontal slope a uh, if you draw a perpendicular line it's going to be in that direction because you need 90 degree angle there so that is why your normal force is in that direction and then for this slope also a uh, it is going to be, let's say you've got that object there. You need that 90 degree angle there. I'm not sure if it, it, it makes sense now, LB. Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Okay, 100%. So let me remove um, all of that. Then uh, you remember because they talked about the kinetic friction, what, what, which means we are going to have a um, frictional force. Can you see? Yes, sir. So this is how you easily draw a free body diagram uh, for that 4 kg block. Uh, I hope that one, it makes sense, isn't it? Yeah, it makes sense. So can you see now, they want you to calculate the frictional force between the surface and the 4 kg block. So frictional force is exactly what the question wants you to calculate lb what do you know about the frictional force you know that the frictional force is actually equals to mg but if there's a surface which has got a kinetic or a coefficient a what do they call that 
let's see if it has a, a coefficient of kinetic of friction then that's when that formula you edit a mu k there so you can easily substitute that substitute that substitute that you can just punch on a calculator i think this is 0 0.2 uh, what is the mass which object we are talking about the 4 kg object over there uh, what is a uh, let's see what is nine point something eight nine. okay nine point eight but there's something that i want us to be careful of let me just quickly check also on the memo there i want to confirm something so uh, i noticed something there i'll be remember a uh, this is actually on an incline it's actually on an incline and for that reason that is why we add cos angle there I'm not sure if you remember this formula, LB. I never really understood it, to be honest. So let me try to remove all of that. I hope I might be able to explain this one. So let's see if we have an object on a horizontal surface similar to that. And then we have this. So if you have the weight there, we know force of gravity is equals to mg then we know the, the normal force is actually going to be fn which is equals to mg over there so always for the sake of making it easy lb uh, let me quickly check something there uh, let me see uh, I will tell you just now, LB. Okay, so for this vertical uh, forces, it's actually a, let's see, sine angle. And also for this one, we can just say it's sine angle there. So for the vertical movements, we add sine angle, we add sine angle. What is that angle? Um, we said normal force acts at 90 degree angle, you remember. And this one always is vertically downwards. So that means also at 90 degree angle there. So that is why we also have a sine 90 there. But for objects in that direction or parallel to the surface, that means for force of friction there, force of friction we might possibly be having let's say uh, that mu then mg and then for this one is cos angle and then in that direction that's when we can be having a um, applied force or if not applied force tension and again in that direction we can also have tension if the objects are actually a uh, that let's see we have tension it's going to be there cause of angle there and the reason for this formulas to look like that um let me do this let's say for an object similar to that one it's on an inclined surface let me do this so it's on an inclined surface being a 4 kg so you remember LB that uh, the weight is actually vertically downwards, but this object, as it accelerates downwards, as they say from this, the statement, do you agree that this object is not actually moving in that direction, but it's moving in that direction? Do you agree? Yes, sir. So that means this is the component of that f g so this component it is the one where we say this is actually f g a uh, what was it i think this is the one which is f g cos angle and then this one is the one which we say it's a f g sine angle which means also a uh, 
force normal remember is balanced by that and it's not balancing this one because force force normal x perpendicular to the surface so that is why even for force normal we are having a what is it force of gravity a what is it um sign angle over there i'll just need to a uh, quick confirm something let me just quickly confirm a uh, something i'll be i just want to check in terms of those trig ratios whether it's sine or it's cos um i'll just quickly get it from the notes the yeah no i got it uh, I got it there. It is actually cos and sine. Let me do this and say cos angle, sine angle. Uh, remember, the reason to that is because there is a triangle with an angle being theta there. In that case, it's going to be a, that 40 there. So that means... A, if we complete a triangle there, this is that triangle we are having where there's 90 degree there. And that angle is actually there. So we try to come up with trig ratios uh, for these components where we know this being hypotenuse. Uh, I think I've experienced load shading on my side. LB, just make sure that in case if it starts to disconnect, then just know that possibly it's a network, but of some light over there. Are you, are you still able to see and can you still hear me on your side? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's try to push um, up to wherever we can. But what I'm trying to explain here, I wanted to say we have weight in that direction. So we want to resolve the components of that weight so we have to have a right angled triangle so can you see with the angle let me see i just need to be careful in terms of exactly where that angle is because it could be there or it could be there so um i just need to make sure of that one let me also see there uh, on my notes i'll confirm for you that one a uh, shortly i'll be yeah, I think, I th think with the first one, I was right. Yes, I was right. So the angle is there indeed. But now, uh, is this the adjacent side or is between these sides, LB, which one is adjacent? The one next to FG. This is the adjacent one, eh? Yes, and, sir. And and which trick ratio is, is, is associated with adjacent? Cos. So that is why there we are going to have FG cos of this angle, which is the same as that angle. And this one here, obviously, it's going to be FG, uh, what is it, sine? Because sine is the trick ratio associated with opposite, isn't it? Yes, sir. So can you see, this is the force in that direction, which is actually that force. This is the opposite, and then this is that one. So that's why there we actually have sine angle there. So can you see that diagram that I drew over there to say, um, uh, what did I say? I just want to make sure that I've got it correctly there. So that means uh, for this sideway movements, that's where we have sine, and then for this ones, that's where we have a cos. So there it means it is supposed to be sine if it's that one. I just want to make sure that I'm getting it correctly there. Let's say sine angle, and then mm, again where? You see, now that diagram is losing me. Let me quickly try to redo it, LB. I think it will form part of an additional explanation to what I've just explained. So let me maybe also draw it in a different angle to say we have an object there. Let's start with the weight. And there 
we've got angle theta there. So what I was saying there, LB, is to say in terms of the weight, the weight of this object is always downwards. So let's say from the center there, downwards. I think I'm running out of ink there. It's always downwards. But this object, LB, it's not moving in the downwards direction, but it is actually moving in that direction there. And again, in terms of the force normal, we said it is a perpendicular to the surface, which is at an angle. So that is why there we are having another sort of another component of the weight there. So this is FGLB, or otherwise it is the weight. <coughs> but the forces acting on this object are actually the components of this weight because this object is not falling in that direction, but in that direction. So that that actually means a what we can therefore do is to have this line, we just bring it down there. Why there? To form a right angled triangle. So that angle is actually there. So now can you see LB, this is what you said. You said there we are going to have FG because it's cos, then we are having cos angle there. And then for this one, which is the same as that one because it's the opposite. Then this one is FG sine of angle, being that same angle, being that same angle. I'm not sure if it now makes sense, LB. Wait, uh, isn't um the F, the FG no, isn't cos theta like perpendicular to the component of FG? Like... Uh, let's see. Wait, you're saying isn't FG what? <clears throat> cos theta mm. is the component of FG perpendicular to the surface. So you're saying isn't FG cos theta perpendicular to yes, it's it's wait i'm failing to understand your question lb but before you ask it again let me just try to re-explain then maybe uh, you'll try to ask it differently so let's see we have the weight uh, in the downwards direction yes so we call it fg but this object is not acting the same direction as that which means we've got what we call the components we have that first component and this is the second component so we have an angle over there, then we form a 90 degree angle there. So we just need to know because this is now our, uh, what is it? This is our hypotenuse. So we have hypotenuse, we want to derive that adjacent side. So can you see, this is the angle, this is the right angle, then this is the one which is a cos angle. And then this one is opposite to that angle. That is why we are having sine angle there, which means, a force of gravity cos angle is the one which is balancing with the force normal, which is perpendicular uh, to that component. So that means there we actually have force of gravity or mg cos of angle. And then for this one is a um, force of gravity sine angle. Yes. Uh, now you can ask a question, LB. No, sir, so it's fine. It, it, it makes perfect sense now, ne? Wait, so which means that we're using sine theta to calculate the horizontal surface? So that means if we calculate a force in, in either that direction or this direction, which could be the frictional force, then is the one with a, um, a, what is it? Sine, sine, sine angle. Uh, but remember, in this case, what what we are calculating is the frictional force. And we said the frictional force is actually equals to mg. It's actually equals to mg. But remember, because it's on an incline, then we have to say cos of angle. And again, because, sense, and again, because 
uh, there is that surface with a coefficient whatever whatever then we add that uh, coefficient there then this means this is the formula for calculating uh, the frictional force on an inclined surface so if it's not on an inclined surface it means there's no angle there but anyway if you want to put in an angle there let me just quickly uh, check something there will oh, be a uh, uh, i was just trying to test an an angle there so let's see can you see if it's on an incline then it's cause whatever angle it forms uh, but if it's not on an incline it's just mg if there's that then you also insert that uh, make sense name no? yes sir okay 100 percent. so let me see let me see let me see let me see can I, I can, oh, so this lesson is being recorded. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to send it to you via inbox name. Just remind me on that one. The order thing. Okay, let's proceed with that question. I think, what will we do in there, LB? I think we're still trying to calculate that question. Can you still able to see the question paper then? Yes. And you see it's, it's, it's clear, ne? Eh? Let me try to do this and check. Ah, no, it seems to be 100%. It seems to be 100% clear there. Okay, so let's see. Um, there it says, where are we? Calculate the frictional force between the surface and the 4 kg. This is where we are, LB. So, uh, obviously, we say it force of friction is equals to mg first thing first you agree there isn't it yes sir and this is actually force normal and again this is actually force of gravity you agree there isn't it uh wait where are we adding those two no i'm, I'm just saying this formula is for force normal and again is for force gravity is the same thing Yes, sir. So, because this object is on an incline, the 4 kg object is on an incline, a 4 kg is on an incline, then we add cos angle. Now you know where that cos angle is coming from, isn't it? Yes, sir. And because they've specified to say that surface has got a coefficient of friction of 0, 0,2 then it means on our formula we are going to add that mu do you agree yes sir so that means lb if you are given a question for a surface they name if they say force of friction you know force of friction is mg first thing first is it on an inline yes So this one LB is not on an incline. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear your question. Uh, I thought you were talking about the other one. Oh, no, 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 no. This one, let's say B. Uh, it's not on an incline. There you agree and you understand. Nay. Yes, no, it's not so on an incline. So that means we don't need that cost angle. Nay. Yes. So, so, so in terms of this LB, it depends if it is given on the question or not sometimes they might say this is the frictional force and then they want you to calculate that chi coefficient whatever whatever if they want you to, or they talk about it just know is there and it's either they will give it to you or they will want you to calculate it if they want you to calculate it then you must uh, be given that force does it make sense now yes it makes sense so can you see LB? Sometimes we don't need, we don't really need to do all the questions related to this type. We just do that one question and we explore a lot of information out of that one problem. Then from there, we move on to uh, other types of problem, just so that you've got exposure. Because obviously, a question won't come 
in the same way but you just need to be aware of important information so don't worry that much in case if for this chapter we may be dealing with that type of a problem we know we have discovered a lot there it's only when you practice on yourself with something that has got a memo especially in terms of the calculations then on our next lesson you can just indicate you say uh, maybe quickly quickly have a look at this and everything it uh, makes sense now Yes, sir. So. Okay, so let's say FG is actually that MG cos of angle. So let's say this is the, the general formula. It all depends on what we have. So we do have this thing, which is 0, 0,2. We have 4 kg. We have 9.8. We have cos of 40 degrees. So whatever that we get is the frictional force. And most importantly, LB, make sure that your mass is always in kilograms. Now, <coughs> just yes. make sure of that. So what is that? Wait, let me quickly calculate. Okay. 0, 0,2 multiplied by 4 times 9.8 times cos of 40. Hey, I'm getting something there. I'm not sure if you're also getting the same. 6, answer. 0, 0, 0, yeah. So it's more like we can just conclude to say frictional force is actually 6 a newton because it's a force. So it's 6 newton. Now. Yes, so did, did, did it make perfect sense there? Let me say 0, 0, 005. Okay, let's say comma zero one there because we can round off that to the nearest whatever so we can just say uh, it is actually that in which direction is the slope is it downwards or is it up the slope is it down the slope or up the slope um up the slope why up the slope <clears throat> Uh, wait, I don't know how to explain. Okay, so every time when I ask you in which direction is the frictional force, ask me this question, in which direction is the object moving? Make sense? Okay, yes. So do, do you believe I'm going to tell you in which direction uh, the object is moving? Can you guess what I'm going to say if you ask me that question? Uh, to the right, I don't know. No, so in short, I'm saying Downward. if 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 I say in which a uh, direction is the frictional force acting, uh, and you ask me in which direction is that object uh, moving, I won't tell you in which direction. I'm going to say refer to the given statement. So that means in the statement you should be told in which direction the movement uh, of that object is. Makes sense. Because obviously, when you write exam, I won't be there to answer that question. So I just want to guide you in terms of where you get that information. Happy there. Okay, sir. So when we calculate, we have to also mention the direction. And again, tell me why are we supposed to mention the direction? Uh, because they want to know where the frictional force is acting. So it's because force is a vector quantity and not a scalar quantity. Um, so the difference between the two is because, for example, time, you can only say two seconds. There's no direction there. Mass is 4 kg. There's no direction there. But when it comes to force being a vector, you give the magnitude and also the direction to say up the slope. Make sense? Yes, sir. 100%. So quickly, 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 uh, let's try, uh, let's try to move to the next question. So one thing for sure, I think um, uh, we'll end it there on this question. Now, our next lesson, I think, because I've given you a bit of a background, then we can run through 
uh, those two questions. I'll, I'll add another type of a problem. So this is the first type of a problem that I wanted us to look at. The other type LB is this one. I also want to take you through this type. Uh, the other type is this one. I also want to take you through this one. Then from there, the last one that we're going to do is this type, but without without that 8 kg, you just have one either in that direction or in that direction. I think they will say uh, will be sorted with those type of calculations. Now, because I see yes, sir. on the same question paper, you can see this type is given, this type is given, then also this type is given. So I think if we can cover, we can try to cover all, then you'll have an idea there. Uh, let's see. Uh, the that last question says calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the system. So <clears throat> this one, there they are actually talking about uh, the system. There, the system is is both both of these things. This one of eight kg, and again this one of four kg. Uh, then. So let's see. Um, you remember that we have this negative T in that direction LB. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I just want to confirm. So, so that's actually what I wanted to confirm. Let me just check on the notes. So just like with those forces there to say this one is in that force and this one is in that force. I also want to confirm when it comes to tension there. <coughs> uh, I'll let you know shortly. Remember, LB, before I finish with this lesson, I will still need us to uh, I will still need us to have that quick discussion there just to check if it might it could be something which which might work. Uh, uh, for us, let me see. LB, let me see. Of course, tension being number five. So, I just want to confirm quickly with regards to those errors. There, I want to make a conclusive statement such that always you know that the force in this, if the tension is in this, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, no, it's fine. I think I'll just have to. Uh, I'll just have to try, and actually. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No, LB. I think with this one, I'll try to make that conclusive uh, statement separately. But for now, let's do uh, the calculation. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to check if. I can conclude to say, for example, with that, with that one of forces, we said for the one along the surface, these are the ones with a, what was it? I think it was sine. Yeah, it was sine. These are the ones with sine angle, sine angle. And these ones are the ones with cos angle. And I explained a why. So I wanted to check also with this tension if I can possibly conclude with the arrows. But let's see. Uh, if we separate these two, then we end up having this one of the 8 kg with a string uh, in which direction? With a string in that direction, LB. And also, we have this one of the 4 kg in which direction? In that direction. So it's more like this object is actually being pulled in that direction direction by that object and at the same time this object is more like it's actually being pulled in that direction by that object i'm not sure if it now makes sense okay wait can, can you please repeat that again okay so when we look at this object alone now as a result of that cable do you think in which direction is this cable a, a 
pulling this 8 kht you're saying the cable you're asking the cable is pulling what let's say maybe we have a string and let me say a how do i ask this question Abe? so i just want to, obviously we disconnected these two objects so i'm saying this string or this rope does it not seem like it's pulling this object in that direction because remember on the statement they said the system is or this 4 kg is accelerating down the slope and for that reason that this object is actually a uh, moving down the slope i mean down the slope it means this string or this cable is actually pulling sorry the 8 kg in that direction so that is why i'm having that arrow in that direction there okay yeah it makes sense and again with regards to the 4 kg that's what i'm saying it seems like the 4 kg because of this string it's actually being pulled in that direction by that 8 kg there Yeah, it so, makes sense. so when I when I was trying to talk about a conclusive statement is because I wanted to say uh, always when you have two strings, let's say you have a string in between and you have two objects, a conclusive statement that I wanted to make is that if you have a, a rope in between, when we talk about a tension, we talk about an arrow in that direction and again another arrow in that direction, meaning this arrow is for this object A and this arrow is for this object B, which means the tension in the rope is actually a, for this object in that direction, for this object in that direction. So it's more like tension is a, a force away, force away from object. So can you see, this is the force away from the object. This is the force away from the object. So I wanted to check if I can conclude to say always when you have a tension. For example, let's say you have um, an aeroplane there, there's that. So what I mean by that, this is a container. What I mean by that, it means force away uh, and again force away. So that's what I wanted to say. This is the tension of the helicopter and this is the tension of the container. That's what I wanted to uh, check when I was having a look uh, there to say. Um, this object is more like it's being pulled towards the top and at the same time this object is more like it's being pulled downwards by that i'm not sure if you now understand what i was trying to do there LB. yeah it makes sense okay 100 percent. so now let me remove all of these and then from there it's just a matter of a uh, formulating we we formulate everything regarding the 8 kg we do the same for that so that means tension of the 8 kg is equals to tension of the 4 kg. Why? Because these are the forces inside the same string. Does it make sense? So that means yes, if you have objects like that and in between there's a tension, that means if you have a way and a way, this is A, this is B, that means tension for object A is actually the same as tension for object B when you separate them and look at them individually. So it's it's more like a, a, these two guys, they committed crime together. Nay. But when they go to court, this one is going to face his own charges. This one is also going to face his own charges, but they committed the same crime. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, 100%. Now, quickly, 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 let's try to formulate. Remember, we said force net. This is a formula which is force net uh, is equals to, what is it? I think it's equals to MA. So always force net is, is equals to MA. So it's only when you talk about force of G, which is equals to MG. But when you talk about a force when you equate it to ma then we say it's 
uh, Fosnet. So this is a formula. You're not seeing it for the first time. Yes. So net, the word net means total or all forces acting on an object. So let's formulate for the 8 kg. So that means um, how many forces are they acting there? I think is that one of the tension and again is a force of friction as a result of that 0, 0,2. Do you still remember? Yes, sir. So that means we only have two forces acting there. And the first one, let's assume the right to be positive. So that means it's going to be positive tension and again minus a um, force of friction, then this is equal to M A. So force of tension, we don't know what that is, but I think we know LB what the frictional force is. Did we not calculate it? Um let me see. Yeah, we did it six comma zero one. But remember that one LB, it was actually for this one on an incline, which is six comma zero one newton. But this one it's not on an incline. So that is why we have to separately calculate that one as force of friction being a zero comma two times m g and not cos angle. Does it make sense now? Oh yeah it does. You see, so can you see the tricky part here? If we only think of a force of friction being that so now you you, you understand what that cos angle means, isn't it? Yeah. So that means there we are going to say 0, 0,2 multiplied by a 8 multiplied by 9.8 is equals to a m a. Then we can just make this the subject of the formula to say it's actually equals to what is m? m is 8. So it's more like it's 8 a acceleration. We don't know. Then we transpose. What is that when you punch it on the calculator? 0, 0,2 times 8 times 9.8 it's equals to 15.68 so that means we have plus 15.68 can you see so the main aim is to make t the subject of the formula so that we can equate them together why equate them together is because we say tension of that is equal to tension of that so it's the same crime committed so is committed by different individuals. So that means their crime is actually equal. It's only that uh, they go to court individually. Make sense? <clears throat> yes, sir. So let's see. Let's formulate for this one. For this one, how many forces are we, are we having there? You remember we have this one of the tension, we also have frictional force, and we also have that component in that direction because they said this thing is actually uh, moving down an incline. So that means force net for this one is going to be equals to ma still. Then what are we having? We have that force in that direction. What is that force? Is um, mg was it cause? Uh, yes, we said. Yeah, is it sine or cause for this one? I think it's sine. It's cause. Is it not sine? Uh, but the second x x uh, thing is always associated with cause. And no, then y is sine. So remember, uh, it's not that this is the adjacent, agree? We had that, and then we had these two components. Let me, then we had that there, and we formed 90 degree there. And can you see, we said this is the one which is cos angle. And then this one is the one which is sine angle. So can you see that one is the but one? Say, is isn't, isn't that going to apply to only when we are looking for the angle that is like on the surface? Uh, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know because no. So so remember that angle is actually there. So because now we resolve the components, so you have that like that. So that means only when you calculate a uh, for force normal. That's when you use cos, meaning there's no way when you calculate for this component, it can be cos and again still cos. So it is that sign there. Wait, can you please repeat that again? So uh, you remember when we're calculating 
the false normal, we used a what was it? We used cause. I'm not sure if you remember LP. We used cause. Yes. And the reason for that was because when we resolve the components of this weight, it ends up being that component, and we also have that component forming 90 degree angle there, and the angle being that. So we said this is the one which is associated with cause because it's the adjacent name. Then there's no way also this one can be adjacent. It has to be signed because it's opposite to that angle. That is why there is actually sine angle. For the forces acting uh, parallel to the surface is sine angle. So the triangle that you're, not, th that you're looking at is not this triangle help. It's not that one, but it's this one. Okay. Yeah, thank so you. That, so that means uh, always when you calculate force normal, it is cross angle. But when it comes to either the uh, the frictional, so either what either the tension or maybe that component is is the one which is a uh, sign. So maybe don't be confused uh, because we calculated force friction which is horizontal in that direction, but we used a cos. So the reason to that we said. This vertical force, when we multiply it by that coefficient, or even if we don't multiply it by coefficient, the normal sorry, the normal force is actually frictional force. So it's more like we used vertical components, but we know that that same vertical force as a result of weight, it is still the same as the frictional force. But it doesn't mean that because we calculated that using force, then we say it's a, it's, it was a horizontal component. It was actually a vertical component that we calculated, but we know it's equals to that force, which is in that angle. Make sense? Yes, sir. So that means um, for this component, it's going to be mg sine angle. So let's now at all the forces acting there. We have this one in that direction, which is positive mg sine of angle. We have those two in the opposite directions. That means we have a force of friction. We also have minus tension. All of this is equals to ma. Does it make sense, that formula? Uh, wait. Mg is equal to Fg is equal to Mg sine theta. Oh, we're replacing the F net with the Mg sine theta. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. This is um, this is actually force of gravity parallel to the surface. So F net is the total forces. Net means total. So. Just like we did there, we said only two forces are acting on that object. That's why on force net on that side, we had one, two. But on this object, how many forces are we adding? Are we having there? We have one, two, and three, which is force of gravity parallel, force of friction, and force of tension. It's equals to MA. A, I'm not sure if it makes sense there, LB. Yeah, it makes sense. So always remember, F net is actually total force. So we look at all the forces acting on that particular um, object. So this is the one that I, I, I actually simplified because we know Mg. What is Mg? Mg, no, what is what, what, what is it? Fg is Mg again. Then what is the sign there? Say so you're okay. cutting, you can't hear you. I think now it could be the network issue now. But let's quickly wrap up. Can you hear me now? It's still cutting. Is it still cutting? Yeah, no, let me try to quickly check. It could be the network at the... Uh, can you hear me now? Is it is it still cutting? Okay. Yeah, no, I can also hear you from your side. You're still cutting. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, is it still cutting, LP? Uh, it's still 
Okay, but it's fine. Let me try to quickly squeeze something, or let me just write. Maybe you will see. Because uh, if I write, you will now understand. So, mass there. What is the mass there? Uh, what is the mass there? We are we are dealing with the four kg. So it's four into nine point eight. Then we have sine angle being forty. Frictional force is that minus tension is equal to four a. Are you still there, LP? Can you see that part? Wait, uh, hey, the formula is confusing. Okay, M net equals to M A. Then you, okay, we're looking for all the forces, right? Mm. Wait, so you are you replacing the F net with M G sine theta? Then you're gonna add all the other forces next to it. Oh, you say you have been confused by that one. Now let me uh, do this. So we know that F G. A parallel is that FG there. It's actually a FG minus force of friction minus tension. So remember, for that 4 kg, we have frictional force in that direction. We have tension in that direction. We have a force of gravity parallel to the surface in that direction. Okay, when, when do we add the MG sine theta? the mg sine theta okay we add it because as a result of force of gravity they said this object is actually moving down the slope yeah i know i'm asking where do we put it uh, let me so maybe let me explain to say on the formula a uh, this is mg sine angle and force of friction is that one we calculated. This is tension. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm still not answering you, LB. Uh, wait, so the MG sine theta is FG parallel. Then you replace that with sine. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Let me, let me see, let me see, let me see. I just want to have some way. I can okay. Let me remove that portion there. So yes, you replace FG parallel. FG parallel. FG parallel. The formula is mg sine angle. Yes, I'm not sure if I've answered you there. Yeah, it makes sense now. Yes. So this is F a uh, FG. Because remember, we always. When you when when we talk about FG, always, always, always we talk about MG. Ne? So because this object is on an incline, then that's when we add sine angle. If it wasn't on an incline, then we, there's no need for us to add that one there. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah, so. so obviously, if there's no this one, then it means it's on a surface. So it is in that direction and it is in that direction they cancel each other out that's why on a formula you won't even have that because it's either is force applied or there is tension there okay wait so, what does the 4 and the 9.8 represent now uh, you mean what is it the mg no down there where you are where you oh, are placing so this one the down was that one no say there where you were replacing the the FG parallel F F force of friction and T and whatnot. Mm. The last thing that you wrote. Uh, <clears throat> wait, wait so I get I get you're saying FG parallel is for mm. sine forty. Yes. What about the four and the nine point eight? Below the way you're oh, substituting. Yes. Oh. Oh, no. No, I get a 4. We are dealing with the 4 kg. And then G is 9.8. So, it's then... still necessary to write the MG. Yes, yes, yes. It's still necessary. So, that is why there, I actually didn't have that FG parallel. So, I just wrote it as formula as MG sine angle. But what you need to do there... Just write it firstly 
as um, F G parallel on your next step then you can still write it as mg sine angle but you still need to then rewrite all of this as they are then from there you substitute so i know it's fine it... so i'll just use the mg yes yeah, so you can just use the mg it's fine then from there can you see what you do is just to punch all of this then you transpose isn't it So you end up having a t is equals to 4a when you punch all of this i think it has to get let me just check there on the memo it gives you 19.19 what is it it gives you 19.19 yes so you you end up having to transpose this one to the other side and this one it gives you 19.19 then you transpose that one, you have minus 4a there. Uh, this is just a mass calculation that you can perform. Uh, I'm not sure if, if they, it makes sense, Obi. Yeah, it does. So can you see, you can easily finish it off because you have these, you just equate it to that, then you calculate uh, for the acceleration because that's what the question wanted you to calculate, isn't it? Can you repeat that again? So, uh, we are trying to calculate the what is it? What are we trying? So, the question wanted us to calculate the acceleration. <clears throat> so, we 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 did this the subject of the formula so that we can equate it with that. So, this is equation number one. This is equation number two. So, you equate this to that and then you solve for a so let me see it's actually 8a which is that one plus 15 comma 68 you equate it to 19 comma 19 minus 4a then you can transpose you have 12a there which is equals to trans i'm not sure if i'm losing you there LB. Uh, say you are you're supposed uh, to replace the t with the 19 comma 19 minus 4a which is that one where there is t we replace with that yes which is that one then and then here's another t which is that one then wait uh, was there? Mm. I get we are looking for acceleration and that side there is no T like to substitute. Uh, wait, 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 let me see. Okay, so this one we we are on the same page there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so we do the same for this one. Uh, then we made T the subject of the formula. I'm not sure if up to here we are on the same page. Yeah, we are. So can you see that T for the 8 kg is equals to this, and this T for the 4 kg is equals to this name. Mm -hmm. Then we know a, the crime is the same, isn't it? Yes. So that is why I equated the crime then. okay and the reason for that is because i know i've got that a that i can solve which is going to be acceleration of the system <clears throat> uh, it makes sense i thought you were doing the simultaneous thing yes, because yes, there's no so like, to replace but then uh -huh. so we're just adding them together we, since yes, they're equal we make them the subject of the formula, then we equate them because we know it's the same crime, but committed by different individuals. <clears throat> so can you see now, there you just solve for A. You transpose, it becomes 12, then that 19.19 minus 15.68. I think there is 3,51. Then A should be equals to that divided no, no, by 12. 
is 0 0.29. 0 0.29 meters per second squared. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes sense there, LB. Yeah, it makes sense. <coughs> okay, so quickly, quickly, uh, before I run out of battery, uh, let's check if we can quickly have a look at that question. So this one will also just check the memo there in terms of what it says. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see there. Um, but the question says... So, how... say, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, when we have, like, a question that has, like, two, ab two objects acting on, we have to, like, calculate them separately. And then if so, there's a need for substitution, we have to substitute. Uh, yeah, so it's more like it, 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 it always depends on the question and also in terms of what the question wants. So can you see in that case, they want acceleration of that system. So you just need to individually sort out uh, the 4 kg, individually sort out the 8 kg. But you know there's something common about those two, which is the tension. So depending on what the question wants, you should just always know that the tension is the same. So uh, you try by all means to find a, a way in which you can use that to your advantage. Uh, I'm not sure if I've tried to answer you there, LB. <coughs> yeah, you did, because hey, this question has a lot of marks and sometimes <laughs> I struggle with it. It has a lot of marks and sometimes it's tricky, I know. So this question, it's a, it's a, bit, it's a bit tricky. So that's what I'm saying. If you can find another one which has a memo, just go through that question, try to if you can understand otherwise if it gives you a problem then on our next lesson you can quickly send me a screenshot of uh, the question and, uh, and the memo then I'll, I'll make sure to study it if i can study it i'm to, up to a, a a stage where i feel like I'll, I'll be able to explain until you understand then we'll we'll go through that particular question as long as it has it has a memo so that uh, we don't we don't get child together now yes sir Okay, so the last question says, how will the acceleration compare if the positions of the 8 kg block and a 4 kg block are switched? Choose greater than, less than, or same answer than explain your answer. But one thing for sure, obviously, this one of 8 kg, it has less mass. Therefore, its weight is going to be less. That means acceleration uh, is at whatever acceleration it, it, it's moving. But the moment you swap, can you see? Now this thing is going to accelerate even more because the weight, more weight is on an, on an inclined. Does it make sense? Wait, can you please repeat that again? So let's, oh, let me do this one. So can you see? Uh, the 8 kg is on a horizontal surface. Nay. Nee. Uh, this one mm -hmm. is on an inclined. So this thing is actually moving in that direction because of the weight of this on an inclined. It slopes in that direction because of that. But yes. if you replace this mass, if you exchange, you put this one there and you put that one there. Can you see now this one is going to be having more mass on an incline, which means it's going to... um slide even faster because of a uh, it has more weight yes so does it make sense that part yeah it does so that means obviously your first response to that question is going to be greater than for that reason isn't it yes <clears throat> It's greater than, let's see uh, what reasons they are having there. So obviously greater than, and they say the component parallel to the slope increase. So what they are actually meaning is that that uh, mg parallel is going to increase. Why is it increasing? It's because the mass is more now. Um, that is why it is going to, to increase. I'm not sure if it makes sense there, LB. Yeah, it does. And then the next thing, obviously we know tension in the 
probe, it stays the same. Doesn't matter whether this one is there or that one is there. The crime is the same. That one you should always remember. Ne? And being the same, it means they are equal. Ne? Yes, sir. And then now, the force net is obviously going to increase. Because why? Because of that MG parallel has increased. <laughs> so these are the reasons that you can give in response to that uh, question. So I'm not sure before I close this lesson, LP, if you've got um, a question. Mm, no, I don't. Uh, and you like no. I should remind you of something. Yes, yes. So that's what I wanted to. I wanted us to actually discuss. I want to check if it could work to our advantage. Because, uh, let me now check something. Let me quickly check something there. Uh, I want to check in terms of how long we have spent can you see almost almost um two hours but we did only one question let's say almost two hours but we did only one question so i'm realizing as i do these lessons to say a uh, i've done it with the other learner i think in one hour we managed to cover let's say um a, a bit of intro let me say a bit of intro and again we did a one q paper and then the second one we just browsed it uh, through i just want to check if it can also work uh, for us so what i did there lb was that for example you see on this lesson that we did uh, i i let's say i did live presentation of the intro for that chapter ne? And then again, um, I did a live while going through that question paper. And then again, the other thing that I did, it was uh, to go live still uh, answering the questions. Now, so my question was, would it work if we give it? Obviously, I think I, I can propose that we give it a try. Now, uh, such that let's say for this same question what i do before we start with our lesson i just record explaining everything uh, that means separately i'm going to have a record that uh, summarizes that introduction because one thing for sure you see especially that part of a conclusive statement in terms of the tension and also uh, uh, the trick ratio so on and angle and what what if i do a, a pre-recorded lesson where I do an introduction of that. I know in 20 minutes, for example, I can cover everything there. Then I take five minutes interpreting, let's say whatever question paper that we'll be doing. Then from there, uh, I can still spend, let's say 20 minutes trying to solve um uh, that question paper. So in that recorded video, it will be something similar to that where on the screen, whatever I'm doing now, uh, I play that recorded lesson. It's explaining and everything. Where you don't understand, then I can pause it. You ask the questions, then I explain. So in addition to that, you might you might find that that interaction, maybe it adds up to, uh, what is it, another, another 10 minutes so can you see if maybe we do it let's say for a total or maybe let's say a total of, of 40 minutes an additional 20 minutes maybe to make it an hour no another 30 let's say an additional 30 minutes or 15 plus 15 i we can still cover two more questions because i've given the theory there uh, i've also interpreted the questions there and then this time is spent on us uh, solving the questions where you don't understand, I just pause um, and then bring a, what is it? An, a, 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 what is it? A video or I just bring a screen that shows you this part where I'll be explaining and everything. Otherwise I can still do it 
uh, online on the screen on the question paper. It, it, it will obviously depend on how your question is. So also this thing will be, I think the advantage to it is that we can do more problems for the same chapter. And again, um, in case if, let's say, for example, in case if you'll be writing on Thursday, because I still have all of that information recorded, then if uh, you you would propose that we shift that lesson instead of being on a weekend, then we shift it to, let's say, day before. We can easily um, redo exactly what we did because I'll still be having that same information which is summarized. Then I just play, then we just discuss it or go through that information. I'm not sure, LB, if you understand what I'm trying to say there, in, if you are open to give it a try. Yeah, so you can just give it a try. And yeah, so let's, going to work out or yeah so let, let's see if it's going to, to work or not. I'm also thinking of introducing the same for those uh, Monday to Friday lessons because uh, I noticed that in case if I happen to be sick uh, and I'm not able to do lessons, can you see that everything is going to completely stop? So that means all the learners for one-on-one -on -one is going to stop. A Monday to Friday to Friday lessons also they're going to stop. But if I do it this way, then um, even if maybe for example there's another learner who wants one on one, I can still um, redo it the same way, provided that is working. I can still do the same way. So it's going to save me some time uh, to re-explain same thing over and over again. Then I can try. A record for other chapters. So you'll find that in one lesson we can cover maybe up to three questions, then we are done. Next weekend we try another different question. So can you see like now on our next lesson we'll still be doing the same chapter but a different question. Can you see? So that's what I'm saying maybe on our next lesson let's try if it works and see how far we can go with it. Then from there, uh, otherwise if it doesn't we'll just uh, try to find a way in which we can possibly uh, do this. Uh, otherwise, if it doesn't work, you might find that we'll just try. If I do a summary, a, a summarized video, then watching, watching, explaining, then from there manually solve the questions. We'll just try to find a way to make it work, just so that we can cover a lot, but in just one video. And again, in case if you need a revision of the same chapter, uh, I won't have to redo it again like this unless if uh, the other option is just for you to watch this lesson again but can you see it's two hours but just one question i'm not sure if you understand um what i'm trying to say there i'll be yeah i see so yeah yeah so i think we'll just try to uh, make it way oh and the other thing i be i wanted to say is just that uh, i'm not sure if you are aware or you are not aware. You remember that time when you were writing, um, a, when was it? I think you were writing on Tuesday and Friday or something. So I wanted to say, uh, with us doing those lessons during the week, it was going to be a favor and not a an everyday thing because the one-on-one -on -one are only on, on weekends. I noticed it's because we couldn't do those lessons on that weekend. That's why I was willing to uh, do it over over the a weekdays so it's unfortunate during weekdays my schedule is very very tight in a sense that after work i prepare for lesson then after lesson i prepare to sleep so you can see in between there's no there's no enough time so i'm not sure if you were aware that the one-on-one -on -one are only on on weekends um LB. LB, 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 LB. Wait, I sir. Can you just yeah. wait? I want to check something. Ne? Oh, okay. Wait. I want to sh read something here. <coughs> there on your, on your um, pinned message, right? You said oh, that the master classes plus check. revision plus study ahead. Then you said special revision days before writing a test or an exam. Uh, let me quickly do this. 
Uh, let me do this. Let me do this. For now, I can. Okay, let me stop. 